Well, I was always interested in motivation for drug and alcohol abuse, you know, what it was that drove people to use drugs of, of, of abuse, let's say. And um, I got the opportunity to study at McGill under Dr. Robert Peel, who was an excellent supervisor, and he was deeply involved with um, drug and alcohol abuse research, looking at motivation for alcoholism, and he offered me a position in his lab, and, and that was what he was working on, and I thought, well, that was one of my cardinal interests, although perhaps not my, my fundamental interest, which even at that point had to do with motivation for totalitarianism and the commission of atrocity in the service of, of group belief. But I thought, well, it's a broad topic, and I could learn a lot about biology and neurobiology as a consequence of working on something that was so biological. So my, my early work in psychology was extremely biologically oriented and it was unbelievably useful. I learned a lot from the animal experimentalists in particular, people like Jeffrey Gray and later Jak Panksepp. Um, bringing people into the lab. So here's who we picked for subjects. If, if you were gonna be a subject in one of our experiments, you had to be a young man and you had to have an alcoholic father and an alcoholic grandfather and at least one other first or second degree male alcoholic relative. We would get these subjects, I, I mentioned who they were, they were young men who weren't alcoholic but who drank socially, who had an alcoholic father, an alcoholic grandfather and at least one other male alcoholic relative. Now why did we pick subjects like that? Well we knew alcoholism ran in families and we couldn't really study its transmission in women because if you're a female alcoholic and you drink when you have a child in utero, then the child can have fetal alcohol syndrome and whatever abnormalities in psychophysiological response or psychopathologies might be associated with uh, their alcoholism can easily be masked by the presence of fetal alcohol syndrome. So we couldn't use women. And besides, alcoholism is a problem that fundamentally characterizes men, although there are female alcoholics. I think it's four to one if I remember correctly from, from those days, it's four to one male to female. So it was, you know, when we thought if we concentrated on those who had the highest probability of developing alcoholism because of their loaded family history, that we could shed some light on the mechanisms associated with alcoholism and that would be useful for men and for women. So we studied sons of male alcoholics, sons of multi-generational male alcoholics. Those were our target group. Very hard populations to find. We had people hired full time to do nothing but find us research subjects. And so we did relatively small end studies because we were lucky if we could gather four or five subjects a month in the Montreal urban area. Anyways, we did discover a lot about alcoholism. We discovered, for example, that if people with this multi-generational history, a, a substantial proportion of them, if they drank enough alcohol to move their blood level up above 0.08, which is legal intoxication level, and if they did that relatively short period of time, then their heart rate would increase above, I think the average was about 12 beats per minute compared to the standard control of, of zero. Zero or one or two, it was, it was very low. And so, and then we did figure out over time, our whole team, that that seemed to be a consequence of susceptibility to alcohol's effect on opioid production in the brain and secondary uh, op opioid effects on dopamine, which is both opiates and dopamine are primarily primary reward chemicals. So it looked to us like people with multi-generational family histories of alcoholism got an opiate response from alcohol. So, but we had to get people drunk in order to find this response. And it turned out that 0.08, which was the legal limit at that time for driving, was approximately the place where we saw these psychophysiological effects and also saw fairly pronounced cognitive and motor effects of alcohol. What factors made alcoholism hereditary? Because it does seem to have a strong hereditary component. And what we basically concluded after doing a tremendous amount of research was that people who are prone to alcoholism, at least one type of person who's prone to one type of alcoholism, got a very, very powerful stimulant effect from the alcohol during the time that their blood alcohol level was ascending in the 10 or 15 minutes after they took a drink, especially if they took a large drink fast or multiple large drinks fast. You can probably tell, by the way, if you're one of these people, if you want to go do this in the bar the next time you go, go on an empty stomach, take your pulse, write it down, drink three or four shots fast, wait 10 minutes, take your pulse again. If it's gone up 10 or 15 beats a minute, look out. 
because that means alcohol is working as a psychomotor stimulant for you. And we found that for many of these people, that was an opiate effect. What seemed to happen was that when they drank alcohol fast, they produced probably beta endorphin, although we were never sure. We can, it can be blocked with naltrexone, which is an opiate antagonist. Anyways, the other characteristic of that pattern of, of, of alcohol consumption is that the, the real kick only occurs when you're on the ascending limb of the blood alcohol curve. So, you know, first of all, your blood alcohol goes up and then it goes down. And generally when it goes down, it's not pleasant. That's when you start to feel hungover. And hangover is actually alcohol withdrawal, by the way. So it's like heroin withdrawal, except it's alcohol withdrawal. And it's generally not pleasant for people, so they usually sleep through it, or it puts them to sleep. But if you're one of these people who get a real kick on the ascending limb of the blood alcohol curve, then you can just keep pounding back the alcohol, and it'll keep hitting you, and keep you in that position where you're you know, on the, on the ascending part of the blood alcohol curve. And you can probably tell if you're one of these people if you can't stop once you get started. You know, so if it's like you have four drinks quick and it's like, man, you're gone until the alcohol runs out or till it's four in the morning or till you've spent all your money or you've been at the last bar in town or that you're sitting on your friend's bed after everybody's gone home from the party and you're still drinking, you might suspect that you're one of those people. That's part of the reason why people like alcohol, because it dampens anxiety. Now, for some people, alcohol also produces dopaminergic activation. So they really like alcohol because it calms them down, like they're not anxious anymore. And it, it also feels, it produces incentive reward activation like cocaine. So for some people, alcohol is an absolutely deadly drug. You can probably find out if you're susceptible to alcoholism quite straightforwardly. If you want to find out, Sit in a bar, take your pulse, down five shots, <laughs> four shots if you're little. You gotta, get your, you gotta get your blood alcohol level above legal intoxication or you won't be able to tell. And then take your pulse again 10 minutes later. If your pulse has gone up eight beats or more, watch it. Because you're probably producing an opiate response to alcohol. Secondary consequence of the opiate response is a dopaminergic response reasonable probability that you'll like alcohol enough to find it difficult to stop drinking once you start. So part of that's cueing the incentive reward system and because it's an approach system and it's being cued by the alcohol you just continue to hit it and the dopamine kicks only occur as your blood alcohol level is rising so you have to keep nailing it nailing yourself with alcohol because otherwise your blood alcohol level won't keep rising and you won't get that nice enthusiasm and assertiveness that goes along with the positive element of alcohol.